Hey, this is Nicholas. Let's talk about herbs that warm the interior and expel cold. Like always, before we talk about each individual herb, let's discuss the category as a whole to try to get a general idea of what's going on with these herbs. Like the name suggests, these herbs are warm in nature and their primary function is to expel cold from the body. So cold is a yin pathogen. It has a tendency to contract, to congeal, to slow things down. It can even cause pain due to cold stagnation. So the signs and symptoms we're going to see will depend on where the cold is in the body. Cold in the lung is going to cause the fluids to congeal and to phlegm. So we'll see cough with profuse, thin, clear white phlegm. This phlegm can even be bubbly or foamy in nature. When cold enters the spleen, it's going to slow down the digestive system and cause stagnation. So we'll see things like abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, and diarrhea that's thin, watery, and without a strong smell. Cold entering the kidney is going to inhibit the kidney's ability to transform fluids. So when kidney yang fails in that function, we're going to get frequent, profuse, clear urination. Or we could see the opposite. We might see difficult urination or urinary retention. The idea here is there's a cold pathogen blocking the smooth flow of urine so the urine can't get out. We can get cold entering the liver. Now this one's a little strange because when we talk about liver patterns, we usually talk about things like liver heat, liver fire, liver yang rising. So when you say cold in the liver, we really mean cold in the liver channel. Remember, the liver channel goes to the inguinal crease and wraps around the external genitalia. So with cold in the liver channel, we get something called Shan disorder, which is sometimes translated as mounting disorder or bulging disorder. It's basically hernia pain, and one of the main causes is cold in the liver channel. Cold in the liver channel can also cause painful menses. When cold causes the blood to stagnate, we get that fixed, sharp, stabbing pain that's characteristic of blood stagnation. Then we also have something called Tuo syndrome, which is yang collapse, or what Bensky calls yang desertion. This is a situation of extreme coldness with symptoms like cold limbs, pale complexion, copious sweating, and curling up into the fetal position. In extreme cases, we can even see certain Shen problems. So some of the herbs in this category are able to treat this Tuo syndrome. We say they warm the original yang or they rescue devastated yang. Herbs with this function of treating devastated yang, we say they enter the heart channel. And then we can also have cold in the channel, seeing things like cold limbs, cold hands and feet, and cold can cause obstruction, leading things like pain or B syndrome. In all these conditions, the pulse is going to be slow or tight, and the tongue is going to be pale or blue. So the general characteristic of these herbs, the temperature is going to be warm or even hot, and the taste is going to be acrid. Remember, the acrid flavor moves and disperses. So these herbs make use of the acrid flavor to disperse cold. The common function of these herbs is, of course, to warm the interior. And the entering channels of these herbs really depends on which system is being affected. So herbs that warm the kidney enter the kidney channel. Herbs that warm the middle jowl enter the spleen channel. Herbs that treat Shan disorder enter the liver channel. And herbs that treat Tuol syndrome enter the heart channel. Cautions we want to pay attention to, these herbs are warm, acrid, and drying, so they may damage the fluids or cause heat signs with long-term use. So use caution in cases of yin deficiency. So let's go ahead and take a look at the herbs themselves. So here we have a list of herbs in this category. The first three are what we call the three hot herbs, because they're some of the warmest herbs in the Materia Medica. Now, as always, when we go through a category of herbs, we want to pay attention to two things. Number one, what is each herb's specialty? Every herb in this category warms the interior, but what makes each herb special? Does it warm the interior to stop vomiting? Does it warm the interior to treat pain? What's its specialty? And number two, besides warming the interior, what else does it do? What other functions does it have that makes this herb useful? So the first of our three hot herbs is Jirfutsa, or aconite. It also goes by the name monkshood, or wolfsbane. As for monkshood and wolfsbane, they are the same plant which also goes by the name of aconite. Well, 
Why aren't you all copying this down? The first thing to know about Futsa is that this herb is toxic in its raw form. To reduce its toxicity, it's prepared by stir-frying it in ginger and it becomes Jurfutsa. But even in its prepared form, we still have to follow the special cooking instruction of boiling it 30 to 60 minutes longer than the rest of the decoction in order to further reduce its toxicity. The entering channels of Jurfutsa pretty much line up with its functions. This herb warms the kidney, so it enters the kidney channel. It warms the middle jaw, so it enters the spleen channel and it warms the original yang to treat yang collapse, or rescue devastated yang, so it enters the heart channel. It also warms the channels to treat pain and B syndrome due to cold stagnation. The other thing we need to know about futsa is it's one of the categories of the 18 incompatible herbs. So futsa is incompatible with beimu, both chuan beimu and zhe beimu, guolo, jirbansha, bai lian, and bai ji. So at this point, let's take a short detour and talk about the plant itself. Professor Snape was correct when he said that this plant also goes by the name monkshood. This is actually a reference to the shape of the flower, which has also been described as a helmet. And the Greek name for this plant literally translates as wolfsbane, probably because it was used as a poison to kill wolves. In fact, even the name aconite comes from the Greek word for dart or javelin, because they use this plant to poison the tips of their arrows. The point is, this plant is very toxic in its raw form, so proper preparation and cooking instructions should be taken seriously. Also, the root structure of this plant is interesting. It has a main root that grows straight down, and then laterally, off to the side, it has what we call an accessory root. So futsa is actually aconite accessory root, or daughter root. That's why the Latin name has the word lateralis in it. The main root used to be called wu to. However, now we distinguish between two different varieties, Chanwu, which is grown in Sichuan province, and Wu, which is wild aconite that grows everywhere else in China. So both of these herbs belong to the category herbs that warm the interior. If we want to differentiate them, Futsa is better for dealing with cold, while Chanwu and Wu are better for treating wind, for things like bee syndrome. I just want to point this out because, one, you may come across one or two formulas with Chan Wu and Sao Wu, especially in plasters and herbs for external application. And number two, when we talk about the 18 incompatible herbs, Wu To is included in that as well. So when you get a question, it may show up as, which of these herbs are incompatible with Wu To? So you have to know that Wu To is just another form of aconite. So pick the answer with herbs that are incompatible with Futsu. So even though we talk a lot about its toxicity, Futsa is a very important herb that really has no substitute. As long as you use the prepared form, cook it properly, and stay within the normal dosage range, this herb is quite safe to use and in fact indispensable in clinical practice. The next of our three hot herbs is ganjang or dried ginger. This herb warms the interior and it's one of our best herbs for warming the middle jiao. In fact, we have a formula called li jong wan, regulate the middle pill. It warms the middle jiao, treating things like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea due to cold. And we see that ganjang is the chief herb because it has a strong action of warming the middle jiao. Ganjang also warms the lung, and this is important because we don't have a lot of herbs with this function. So by warming the lung, ganjang treats phlegm that's thin, clear, copious, and watery or foamy or stringy in nature. And like jerfutsa, Ganjang is also able to warm the original yang to treat yang collapse. Our formula for this condition is called Suni Tang, or frigid extremities decoction. It only has three herbs, and Jirfutsa and Ganjang are there because they both have the common function of rescuing devastated yang or treating yang collapse. Another thing we can say about Ganjang is that it can also be used in its toasted or charred form to stop bleeding due to coldness. This is called Paojiang. And this is important because, again, we don't have a lot of herbs with this function. When it comes to stopping bleeding due to cold, we really only have three. Here, Paojang, toasted ginger, Aie, or mugwort, from the category herbs that stop bleeding, and Shui Yu Tan, which is charred human hair. And that's about it. So that makes Paojang an important herb for this function. The last of our three hot herbs is Rogue or cinnamon bark. Common here, rogue warms the interior. It warms the kidney, warms the middle jowl, 
and warms the heart. But notice, even though Rogue enters the heart channel, it does not treat yang collapse. When we say it warms heart yang, we're talking about things like chest bee and palpitation. And then, similar to Futsa, this one warms the channels to treat pain and bee syndrome due to cold. Rogue also has this interesting function. We can say it anchors floating heat, guides heat to descend, or leads fire back to its source. Basically, when yang is deficient, it can float upward and cause heat signs in the upper body, even though the overall pattern belongs to cold. So we can call this heat above and cold below, or false heat with true cold. So we might see certain heat signs in the upper body, like a flushed face or sweating, but the low back and legs are still cold, telling us the heat is floating upwards. Or the heat can float upwards into the heart, causing irritability and insomnia, something we call kidney and heart not communicating. A basic formula for this condition is called Jiao Taiwan. Huang Lian enters a heart channel to clear the heat above, while Ro Wei warms the kidney, guiding the heat back to its source in the lower jiao. And finally, we don't really say that Ro Wei has a tonifying action, but it can be used alongside other tonifying herbs to help encourage the generation of qi and blood. This idea comes from chapter 5 of the Su Wen, which says, Zhuang Huo San Qi, Sha Huo Sheng Qi. A strong fire disperses qi, but a small fire generates qi. So we can make use of this idea by adding a small amount of rogue wei to the formula, and its yang nature will help with the formation of qi and blood. Wu Juyu warms the middle jiao, and its specialty in warming the middle jiao is treating nausea and vomiting. A way to remember this, instead of saying, would you stop vomiting, you can say, Wu Juyu stop vomiting. Wu Juyu is a hot herb, so it's typically used for treating nausea and vomiting due to coldness. But it turns out, Wu Juyu is so good at stopping vomiting, we can even use it for vomiting due to heat, as long as we combine it with cold herbs. For example, we have a simple formula called Zuo Jin Wan that treats nausea and vomiting due to heat. Wu Juyu is there in a small dosage to stop vomiting, then a much larger dosage of Huang Lian is there to clear heat. Besides warming the middle jiao, Wu Juyu also warms the liver channel to stop pain. Remember the liver channel goes to the inguinal area and the lower abdomen, so this herb treats Shan disorder or hernia pain, inguinal pain, pain and contraction of the testicles. It can also treat painful menses due to cold stagnation in the liver channel. And then, like Rogue Wei, Wu Juyu can also be used to anchor floating heat, but this one can only be used externally for this purpose, never internally. Gao Liang Jiang is galangal, which is similar to ginger. It warms the middle jiao, and if anything, its specialty is stopping pain, so epigastric and abdominal pain due to cold. Hua Jiao is Sichuan peppercorn, it warms the middle jiao, and it also kills parasites. In this case, when we say parasites, we mean both real parasites, like roundworms, and also fungal infections, like athlete's foot or yeast infection. For fungal infections and skin itch, it can also be used externally as a soak or a wash. Ding Xiang is clove. It warms the middle jiao, especially for rebellious stomach qi. It warms kidney yang, especially for infertility and low libido. And it can be used externally for toothache. Just take a whole clove and hold it over the tooth, and it has a numbing effect. Xiaohui Xiang is fennel seed. In warming the interior, it's especially useful for stopping pain. It warms the middle jiao, especially for abdominal pain, and it warms the liver and kidney channels to treat Shan disorder. So our major formula for Shan disorder is Tian Tai Wu Yao San. As the name suggests, the chief herb in this formula is Wu Yao, which we learned in the category Herbs That Regulate Qi. It moves liver qi, but it also has this action of warming the liver channel. Then we see Xiao Hui Shang, fennel seed, because it also warms the liver channel to stop pain. And Gao Liang Zhang is also here because it warms the middle to stop pain. So this formula was originally for Shan disorder or hernia pain due to cold, but its usage has been expanded to include painful menses due to cold in the liver channel as well. In extreme cases of cold, it's common to add Wu Juyu and Zhuo Gui, as these herbs together will enhance the formula's ability to warm the liver and kidney channels. Bi Ba is long pepper. It warms the middle jiao, especially for cold pattern diarrhea. It can also be used externally to treat deep source nasal congestion due to cold. Hu Jiao is pepper, 
like the kind you have in the shaker next to the salt. It warms the middle jowl, and it's usually used in food therapy, not in decoction. So, a brief overview. The first three herbs are the three hot herbs. Futsa and ganjang can warm the original yang to treat yang collapse. Futsa and rogue warm the kidney yang, and they also warm the channels to treat pain due to cold stagnation. Ganjang is one of our best herbs for warming the middle jiao, and it's also an important herb for warming the lung. Rogue also has this function of guiding heat downward or anchoring floating heat, treating the condition of kidney and heart not communicating. It can also be used to encourage the generation of qi and blood. Wujuyu warms the middle to stop vomiting. Remember, Wujuyu stop vomiting. It also warms the liver channel to treat shan disorder. The rest of our herbs are kind of like spices used in cooking, and they pretty much all warm the middle jiao. Gaoliangjiang warms the middle to stop pain. Hua jiao warms the middle and also kills parasites, especially fungal infections. Ding shang can be used externally for toothache. Xiao Hui Shang warms the liver channel to stop pain. It's in our main formula for Shan disorder. Bi Ba warms the middle, especially for diarrhea. And Hu Jiao is commonly used in food therapy. So that's it for the category Herbs that Warm the Interior and Expel Cold. I hope you enjoyed it, because that's all for today. Thanks, and see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can head on over to tcmstudy.net to download notes that go along with this video. You can also take a practice test to see what you've learned. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.